Time to get these guys on. Alright, we've got to measure the truck on level ground. And the nearest level ground is actually ways away from my house. Yeah. No level ground around here. Alright, so to measure the lift here, there's two ways to measure it. So, to through the center of the hub to the bottom of the fender, I've got like 33 and 3 quarter inches. Now, if you want to adjust for tire size, we've got 20 inches. Okay? So, center hub, bottom of this fender. Now, obviously, with different fenders, you have slightly different measurements. And there's other ways you can measure this. But for my truck, this is what's going to work best. Alright, moment of truth. So these are Bill C 5100s with Old Man Emo 2885 springs in them. Let's see what we got. We're at 36 inches. Sweet. I've got 22 and a quarter inches. So we're at just under 36 inches. Quarter inch of, of squat, of lean, but uh, not bad. Since I haven't really driven the truck much yet today, I'm going to drive it. Uh, around a little bit more, see what I think of the springs, see what I think of being lifted. Sitting in the cab, this is a amount of lift that you can definitely feel. I can tell that the truck has been lifted. The, the front end is just taller and I can feel it. So uh, I'm gonna drive it around a little bit and see what I think. So for those of you curious, here are my alignment specs. Now, I don't know a ton about alignment, but it looks like they got everything more or less where it's supposed to be um, from before. It was a little bit out of alignment, and I could tell the tires were wearing a little bit funny, um, but it looks like everything's within spec now, including caster and camber, which I know are a bit of a concern when you're lifting these vehicles and not adding an aftermarket upper control arm, which I did not. So um, it looks like everything's good on the front end there. Okay, so here's what we're looking at for the new shocks that I've got. So, like I said, these are Bilstein 5100s with Old Man Emu 2885 coil springs on them. Uh, the lightest option you can go with, I believe, is the 2884. So this is just a step up from that. And uh, you can see here, it's brand new, look great. They came completely assembled from Supreme, or sorry, from SuspensionLifts.com. Uh, great shape, perfect quality, uh, fully ready to go. All that mounting hardware, uh, it looks like the shop put on new hardware, which is great. Uh, I don't think the shocks came with any. And then we've got the stock upper control arm right here. Uh, and like I said, they had no problem getting the alignment within spec, so that's great. I think as a, a level, this is going to work great. So it definitely looks a little bit more level. Obviously, you guys don't have a great frame of reference for what it would have looked like before but that front is definitely raised up um, and it's a lot taller. There are some common concerns with lifting the Tundra, um, particularly the upper control arms R1. I knew that if I was going for about two inches of lift, I should be good for alignment. But if you go more than that, you're probably gonna need that upper control arm in order to get all your alignment numbers. Um, even mine are probably a little thin. I need to look it back up again and go through the numbers, but I'm betting mine are a little on the thin side, even if they're within spec. You definitely wanna look at your CV axles over time since they're now riding at a little bit of an angle after a level kit. Uh, you may find that the boots are really old and dry and then they'll tear uh, after a while of being lifted. Mine look like they're in pretty good shape. Their angles aren't that bad, so I think we'll be fine. But the ways to counteract that are to get new CV axles, new boots, or do a diff drop before they split. Um, I'm not doing any of those. I'm just riding it out because I think they'll be fine. So if you're looking to level an access cab like I have, four wheel drive, uh, V8 engine, basically the same front end weight, except for the bumper, you're probably gonna wanna go with the 2884s. These are, again, the 2885s. They're assembled with the spring on the first clip. You're really not supposed to go past that. Um, so that's what I've got, the 2885s. Just the cold soft road bumper. It's about 100 pounds. No winch, no extra weight in the front end otherwise. So the 2884s are probably a good bet for a level if you're going 5100s and old man emo spring. There are a ton of coils that you can get 
for the Tundra. You can get fully rebuildable and adjustable coilovers like Icon King, Fox. Uh, you can get spacer lifts. Um, I got something that's kind of in the middle. So the Bilsteins, they do have a clip and they have rings that you can adjust. So you can get first clip, second clip, third clip or third ring. Uh, so they're adjustable. If these ever did sag for some reason, I could take it to a shop and pop them up. Or I could swap out the coil, but they're not fully adjustable. I can't just take a tool while it's on the truck and jack up the truck or lower the truck and adjust it. Um, but this was a good price point. This was basically the cheapest fully assembled uh, strut and spring. 600 bucks, not bad. It's usually like 1100 bucks to get your hands on a set of fully adjustable coilovers. So in my opinion, this is a pretty good deal. That's about half that. Um, and you can go way more. So just to level the truck and handle the weight of the front bumper, these aren't bad. The ride quality of these springs, at least my first impression, is it's pretty decent. They handle a bit better than stock, I think. They're a little bit firmer and there's no rebound. So on my old stock springs, when you hit a bump, you go, you hit the bump, you go up, you come back down and sort of then level out. This truck, you just kind of hit it and the spring's set. It's just one rebound and that's it. A little bit firmer but way less movement. The truck also doesn't nosedive as much when I'm braking. I like how the truck feels lifted. I can tell it's taller in the front. I can tell it's kind of leveled out now just sitting in the cab. You know, I'm used to seeing certain angles when I'm driving. I can tell it's taller. Um, I like the feeling. Obviously, we need to dirt test it. I'm guessing it won't be that much better than stock on really bumpy dirt roads. These aren't high performance coilovers. These are just uh, an option for lifting it where you're using springs, you're supporting the extra front end weight. I'm not expecting a super plush ride out of these. I'm just going to be real honest about my expectations there. This is a cheaper set of coils um, and struts, so I think it's just going to ride normal. All right, I just got home, and here are my tires. Sweet. Look, uh, look beefy. Damn. They're really skinny. Holy cow. Look at that. Oh. Those are some skinny tires. This is gonna be sweet. Oh my gosh, they're so skinny. I love it. All right, let's go to the tire shop. Sweet. Let's hit the road. All right, guys, these are the tires. Sweet. Just filling that gap in the wheel well a little bit more here. They're not that much bigger than stock, only about an inch, inch and a half taller. Uh, but they look good, dang. Yeah, sweet. Uh, still got plenty of control arm clearance because I went with really skinny tires. These are 235, so sweet. Oh yeah, real skinny. Now, a lot of you who are doing uh, tire size math and looking at other setups, you might think these tires are a little small. And, you know, in a sense, you're right. They're not exactly the biggest tire you could fit on this setup. You could toss on a 33. You could even fit a 35 if you wanted to tub the firewall. But there's something to be said for these smaller tires. So there's going to be a few advantages. Not only do these tires have less friction because they're skinnier and they offer less rolling resistance, they're also just going to be lighter. There's less tire there um, than a 33 inch tire. And all that mass on the outside of the tire, that's what matters the most. So the bigger you go in diameter, all that mass in the tread block is on the outside. And that inertial mass, uh, that takes a lot to move. The inertia of that tire is going to increase and increase as you make it taller and the weight is all around the outside of there on those tread blocks. Um, now, there's something else I also like about this tire size, which is if I want to, which I do for now, I can just keep my mud flaps. There's no trimming required. Um, they fit great. Uh, even on stock suspension, these would probably fit totally fine and not rub at ride height. Uh, we'll see at full compression, at full up travel, if they rub, but I'm guessing it'll only be close or they won't. And so I can keep the mud flaps, keep my paint in decent shape. Um, this is great. This is a great compromise tire size for someone who wants to fill in the wheel well, like me, but doesn't really need the extra half inch of ground clearance you get from going through a 33. These 32s are perfect. Perfect. They'll do great in snow. They'll be nice and quiet on the highway. Give me a little bit of ride height, visually look good, and they'll last forever because these are light truck tires. So we'll only see a slight hit in MPGs, I think. Uh, I think this tire size is going to work really good for me. Yeah, we got the new tires on. These are 235.85. Uh, R16, they're supposed to be about 31.7 inches tall. Um, so, 
we're now sitting at uh, about 37 inches for that. Notice in my videos I was watching them, I've been tilting it. So we're going to try and pull it back straight up here. Um, I've got about 22 and a quarter. So I've been driving the truck a little bit with the new tires and you know I like them so far. It's, it's hard to say what the ride is really going to be like but these seem to ride fine. I haven't noticed any noise yet. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. There's going to be future videos about this truck and how it's treating me. But you know just the initial impressions I think those Rubitrex are pretty good tires. I think they're going to work and they're going to get the job done. Uh, the truck just sits so good. It's hard to capture it in video sometimes but the way the truck sits right now I love it. I love the simplicity. I love the tiny little 16 inch wheels with the taller tires. I love how it sits level. Uh, it's totally noticeably higher off the ground between the lift and the tires. It just looks right. That bumper, super high clearance. It all looks really good. And I love the way that lifted trucks drive. There's something about trucks. They're just so square and firm. And when you lift them and level them, it just brings that out of the truck. I love the way it drives. And I think the setup's going to treat me really, really well. So I'm excited about it. It just handles good. This has been a long time in the making. This has been my like dream aesthetic for the truck. It's just a level, a bumper, and a camper shell. The, you know, there's some finishing details we could get here. We could get the shell, uh, paint match, you know, stuff like that. But just the slightly larger tires, the stock wheels, the camper shell, the roof bars, the front bumper. This is everything I wanted for this truck so far. It served me super great camping, uh, and now it's set up and it drives so nice. So. I'll keep you guys updated. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like, uh, thumbs up, and uh, check out the links below. And I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys later.